Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics. How you doing? Welcome to the Fantasy MD's Baseball Podcast. Today is Monday, April 18th, 2022. This is our 14th episode, believe it or not. We're getting there, you know. Here's your host, Dominic Martino. Here with my brother, my co-host, Matthew Anne. Matt, what's up today, brother? How you feeling? Week one's in the books. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know, it's been a great weekend of baseball outside of me losing week one. Uh, You know. I still enjoyed it, even though my uh, my bum hurts today. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a tough one. It's been a tough one. It's a long season, though, so I got 21 weeks ahead of me. Yeah. I'm ready well, to rock. You know what, my brother? I think you I mean, you hit me with the perfect lead-in, so I'm going to take that one. I'm going to hit it out the park right here. Um, mm-hmm. Finger on the pulse, my brother, and my big thing is don't overreact, man. It's only been a few games, a few series. It's just that I feel like everyone's overreact. Everyone's rushing, you know, panicking. Should I drop Freddie Peralta? It's like, that's a crazy question right now to me. To me, that's a crazy question. No, you don't drop Freddie Peralta. You hang on with a guy like that, and you wait. Now, when it comes to some guys at the bottom of your bench, you know, some guys you threw darts at, if they're not panning out right now, that's when you should be listening to the MDs and picking up guys like we've mentioned, like Nestor Cortez, that we had a great rant on, you know, one of our most like viewed videos. Hope you got him on your roster. I know Matt and I have him on a couple of our teams and just guys like that. We're going to get into the, you know, a few names later that we mentioned, you know, uh, Matt's, Matt's been killing it too. Like uh, Matt, Matt, you want to do your lap on Merrill Kelly real quick? Yeah. yeah. Just going to yeah. flex real great quick. Call. Great call. Yeah. You know, great I did, call, my brother. I did say when we were going over the matchups, I said, you know, Keep an eye out for the guy. You know, he could be really good. I'm waiting for that blowout. I mean, that uh, that breakout. So, you know, I think uh, I think everybody should really start listening to what we got to say here. And uh, if you were listening, you probably have a really great bench right now. Because yeah, all the guys yeah. we named over the last couple of weeks were sitting on waiver wires in most of the leagues that I was in. And I'm like, <laughs> thank you. Yep, yep. I'll admit a lot of the guys that we've been talking about have helped me. I, I did pretty good this week one, knock on wood, man. Um, hopefully I just keep pushing the rest of the way. Um, but all right, let's get into some news here, man. Let's uh get you guys, you know, informed if you haven't been paying attention. Um, the big one here, which isn't actually turns out it's not as crazy as some people may have thought. Mike Trout took a nice um fastball on the hand. Uh, didn't look so good right away, but he did get an MRI Monday. It uh, confirmed there's no uh, structural damage or fracture. Um, he's out today, which is Monday, but um, he should be back soon. Uh, it's not the, nothing too big there. Um, I think we keep a push to the next one there. Unless, Matt, you got anything you want to mention on, on Mike Trout? No, I don't no, think no. it's nothing actionable, really. Not unless I see him pop up on on um, on the IL or, you know, they say he's going to miss a couple games, then I'll be scared. But other than that, I think uh, nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Um, I right, keep it pushing. Uh, another guy. Uh, this one actually is a little bit worse. Javier Baez. Um, he hurt his thumb. I think that he said he hurt it on opening day, but um, wasn't too bad. But then he hurt it again a couple days back, and he uh, landed on the ten day IL, backdated to April thirteenth. So, uh, you know, that's a a tough one there. But once again, if you were listening to us, you might have picked up a guy like Gavin Lux, and he's been uh, rolling. I know I picked him up as my um, Javier Baez replacement. I know he's owned in a lot of leagues right now but i just want to did uh i want to I wanna just want to throw it out there that gavin lux is uh killing it so i'm one of guy i was high on coming into the year uh matt any thoughts on bias just besides you know um uh, just keep your eye out on there the thumb issue yeah pretty much you know you'll find a replacement there's plenty of short stops out there yeah yeah and once again we're going to be hitting you guys with our, our normal our, i think we're making this a weekly uh a monday thing is going to be our big waiver wire you know a segment which has been on point so far guys once again keep look out for that one um next uh news and note though is uh byron buxton goes down with an injury uh matt i think you i think you called that one as well here you know um if you sold high like matt was pushing you, you might have made out like a bandit um it's a knee injury um the twins are saying he's like to miss a week, but I think that week turns into two, turns into three with Byron Buxton. Turns into um, a whole season. Yeah, you, know. Uh, you know, once again, <laughs> I like I hate to laugh. I don't like wish Byron Buxton any like ill, but it's like it's been like a whole career. Like it's like instead of crying, like I'm laughing, I'm not laughing at him, I'm laughing at like just the craziness of that. You can almost call it when that Byron Buxton goes down with an injury, man. Sucks for the twins, you know, um, just sucks for fantasy owners that really what went really high on him. Um I don't know, man. What Buxton? <laughs> I mean, I can't say I'm surprised because yeah. I've only been saying it for weeks. And if anybody who did exactly what I told them to do from Thursday, you're welcome because you got a yeah. all and a half. And hopefully, you were smart enough to trade for Brandon Woodruff or even Freddie Peralta. And 
I think that you could straight flex and you know what? I get, I get PC and I get 10% of those winnings. So <laughs> that's just about it. Yeah, guys, you know what? It may be instead, instead of, instead of any winnings on my end here for any of the info, we take a follow, a listen, you know, any of that good stuff, it all helps out. Um, on to some more interesting news here. I actually did see, um, a news, a uh, note here about Ryan, uh, Presley of the Houston Astros. Um, kind of interesting. He did hit the 10 day IL. So I will say go pick up, go pick up Hector, Hector Neris, but. Um, it looks like he might be back sooner than later. It looks like um, they came out and said he's going to be back very, very soon. It may be a minimum trip on the IL. But right now, I say it's about juice in the orange. Get those saves from Neris. And um, that's about it on that. That's a, that's a tough one for Presley owners right now. I mean, hopefully you can get out there and, and get your Neris until, you know, he comes back. But um, pass it to my brother here on this one. And on a sec. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. I'm not thrilled about having Neris, but. Um, because it sucks losing Presley, but you know what? You got to do what you got to do and and manufacture some wins. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Keep it pushing here. Uh, Jonathan India still remains out of um, the lineup here for the Cincinnati Reds, um, and they just they've looked absolutely horrible so far. It looks like they're saying an IL trip is ha- uh, possible. Hamstring. It's a ham. Uh, it's a hamstring thing, which is uh, you know it's that's that's not that doesn't look good to me. Um, and he's been struggling so far. So um, with Jonathan India, that's a tough one, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, you got to get him on your IL, and uh, we got Wave of Wires coming up for you soon. So, but he, I don't know if, how, how that one's going to outlook. I'm sure we'll have some more info. Um, hopefully, yeah. on our uh, next episode coming up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you guys keep hearing me say throughout the whole whole draft season, if you've been listening from the beginning, you know, I you hear me complain about soft tissue issues, something that could be nagging. And look, it's nagging. He hasn't hit the IL yet, but now he's burning up a roster spot because you can't put him there. You can't make the move because you don't want to drop a guy like India. So, like, this is one of those things that could nag him for a good chunk of the beginning of the season, could put pack uh, pop back up at the, in the middle of the season, end of the season. So, like, this is not a good side for us. Um, you know, what are you going to do, though? You probably invested a pretty much a pretty good capital. What I would do is, personally, if you're not in, like, a dynasty or keeper league, you know, I would wait until he comes back, this is bothering me, gets hot, and then I would trade him. That would be my advice yeah. to everybody. Get, you know, get what you can from him, but not now. You're not going to – you're not even going to get pennies on the dollar. You're gonna, they're gonna just be like laugh at you. I wouldn't even try to package them. It's nothing, nothing you can do in India right now. You just hold them, wait, and then sell. I'll tell you when. Don't worry. This this time, listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think Matt hit the nail on the head perfectly there with that one. Uh, with India, wait till he comes back, and if he starts, you know, picking it up, get him off your team, just sell him as you know, reigning rookie of the year and that thing. But who knows with that hamstring and him not performing, kind of going hand in hand. Maybe we give him a shot next spring training. We'll see how he comes in. If he comes in healthy, looks good. You know, the kid's got a lot of talent, but this year is not looking great for him. Just small news and note here. This is just something super small. Um, Oakland looks like they got a. A couple of guys that got COVID. So if you have anybody on that team, be prepared. Um, it might be going around the clubhouse. So just be prepared. You might, and Oakland's not a great team. So maybe it just Montas at this guy I think of the top of my head right now. But um, if you got oh, anybody uh, uh, you play, just um, be careful. That team's got a couple guys uh, headed and, to the IL with COVID. Yep. We're good with that. Um, and then we got, what, Acuna? Yeah. They, you, you could lead that one, brother. Yeah. Sorry. I had to jump in and steal of it. Course, so, of course. Of uh, course. No problem there. So uh, Acuna, my boy here, you know, it looks like we can see him back pretty much pretty shortly. Uh, right now, you know, it seems that um, he's about to start his rehab assignment tomorrow, which is really, really ahead of schedule. He looks great. If you watch some videos of him taking some swings, he's looking like the old Acuna. The only sure thing I would is. say is, you know, don't count on him, on him for steals yet. I don't think the Braves are going to be letting him loose just yet. But, I mean, anything can happen with the way this kid is progressing. He's a freak of nature. But I will say that we can count on his bat at least. You know, the average is always going to be there. The bombs are going to be there. And, of course, the ribbies. So, you know, we can we can at least be happy with the four-category four, uh, contributor that he is. Hopefully, we, we see him in about two weeks, which I think if, you know, there's no setbacks this week, I think he gets, like, two, three more games, and I think we see him Monday. And then uh, I think we might be rolling. That's best hope, best scenario. If not, it'll be, you know, that first, first week of May. But I think yeah. it's going to be sooner just because of how fast they're letting him rip. Yeah, um, just with that, I'm just going to just pinpoint some things here. The Braves have said that their target date for Acuna to be back with the big league team is May 6th. He's supposed to start his um, rehab tomorrow uh, assignment tomorrow with AAA. 
Um, they're saying two and a half weeks is how long they're predicting he's going to be down there. But um, as Matt's saying, if Acuna looks right in a week, I mean, there's no reason that the Rays would hold him back. I mean, why are you going to waste um, those bullets down in the minors when you could be getting them up in the bigs for you guys? But um, I do want to throw this out there with Acuna. Now is the perfect time to throw feelers out. I mean, you know, you throw your feelers out there. You see, um, hey, maybe you offer a little trade, a two for one. You know, uh, you give a hot bat. You know, uh, maybe uh, if you got an extra pitcher, you throw it out there. See if uh, the Cunha owner bites because when he's there, he's a easily best player in the league, not top three. You know, he's right up there with Soto and Vlad and, you know, Tatis. I know we got a bunch of great young players in this league, but he's up there, obviously one of the best of them. So I would actually try and go out there and see if I could add him to my team right now. You know, if you got an owner out there, that's uh, not up to date on all of the news, not listening to the MDs. <laughs> um, all right. Going to keep it moving though. Um, John means hit the IL. Um, let's see what, um, happens here with Baltimore they have a few options as young guys that could possibly come up and you know take the spot but um I don't think nothing's officials out there yet it's the 60 day IL by the way for John Mean so he's going to be out a while there um, is that... one person that is intriguing and I kind of want to take it yeah, go ahead. So, so there's their prospect who I'm actually in the, debating in the middle of picking up right now and that's Grayson Rodriguez so he's the number one pitching prospect in baseball right now oh yeah um the kid has some electric stuff and you know there's no word yet there's not even you know activity on his page yet of whether he's going to get picked get brought up but i mean it would kind of make sense it's not like they have like a deep in, a, a deep bullpen or anybody sitting in the wind or even i don't even think a free agent of note where they can just call up their big their big time prospect and kind of just roll with it so i can honestly see him getting called up right now he's about 17 percent owned so he's somebody that i would probably at least have on the watch list yeah, I would I would throw him on the watch list. He's definitely uh, obviously Matt said number one prospect in baseball, but um I haven't seen anything um on him. I heard they were talking about Keegan Aiken maybe taking that spot, who is um once again just not helping anybody. Where Grayson might actually be out there helping people, but until that move uh, gets made, um once again he's he's kind of throw him on the watch list right now. Baltimore isn't a great team, tough division to pitch in right now. I don't think it's really anything actionable there right now. Just um if you got John Means, I'm um, sorry about that. <laughs> so we'll keep pushing to some better news uh looks like mike clevenger's on his way back and he did have like a nice little outing uh his last time out um i'm pulling up the exacts but i saw it was five strikeouts um he should be back um he has another uh rehab um outing tomorrow actually which is tuesday um yeah he tossed on um, 31 in the last one so uh, it looks like he could be back maybe first, second week of May, which would be interesting. Uh, Mike Clevenger is a really good pitcher, one healthy. Um, it's tough, though. With guys coming back off injuries, usually that control is a little bit shaky. So I know, um, you know, there's been a few guys that have come back so far that have been a little bit shaky, like um, Severino. Um, so just be careful with him. I think he's might be another buy low guy if you can go out there and uh, get him for like pennies on the dollar right now. I think that's a totally great move. Uh, just uh, that's really about it with Clev. Mike, uh, I mean, Matt, any thoughts there with Clev? Mike Clev? Uh, you know what, man? Uh, he's just another one of those guys. I thought he was going to come back, you know, be real strong and, you know, great comeback candidate. But you know what? Like, he, it looks like he's just doing Clev things and he's falling into that Byron Buxton category, that Alberto Montesi. And you know what? It's just really depressing. So at this point, again, he's another one, like I said, when he comes back, trade him and, uh, you know, somebody will pay high once he hits, once he starts throwing 97 miles per hour again because he will Real get quick, hurt again too. I, I mean, I know it's super early in the season, but can we can we get a, a an Alberto Ma, Alberto Mondesi like uh, told you so moment real quick? He's doing absolutely nothing so far. And listen, my whole thing is I know the guy can be the best player in baseball for a month, but baseball is longer than one month. We play, we play more, we play more than one month worth of games. Listen, uh, you know, I, it's just that I, I just wasn't really high on him and he's not really doing well yet. So, I mean, guys, yeah. you got to listen to the MDs, you know, that's what we're telling you here, you know? Um, all right. So last bit of news and notes, um, Blake Snell officially did hit the IL. Um, it looks like he's supposed to throw, um, a bullpen though over the next couple of days, possibly tomorrow. So, I mean, he might be back sooner than later with Snell and Clev on the way back. 
back. Um, I, I mean, let's try, let's transition right into it because we talked about this guy last week. Um, he was a waiver wide pickup. He still is a waiver wide pickup, but I'm going to throw the caveat out there. I'm talking about Mackenzie Gore. If you can't already tell, um, with Snell and Clef coming back, I don't know if he stays in the rotation, but he has a great opportunity coming up this week against the Cincinnati Reds, um, who have been absolutely horrible. I think the last one standing on that team right now is Joey Votto with, uh, Jonathan India hurt. So that's going to be a a great matchup. I think if Gore goes out there and shows out, that's going to be um, a tough decision for the Padres. In his first start against Atlanta, he gave up two runs, had three strikeouts, went 5.1 innings, um, and he looks pretty good. I mean, he didn't really get a lot of whiffs on those um, pitches, and he didn't really get a lot of strikeouts, but hey, it's the Atlanta Braves, you know, championship team for his first start. I think that's pretty serviceable, and I think if you picked him up and, uh, you know, you hold him right now and you see what happens against the Reds this week, and if he's still out there, you go up and you get him right now. Literally, you pause the podcast, you go pick him up, and then you hit play again, and then you come back. Matt, thoughts on your boy Gore, McKenzie? I mean, Showed out? I did tell everybody last week, and you know what? I didn't start him myself. I left him on my back. It's all right, though. It's all right. But got to play it safe. You know, this week, I'm rolling him out full confidence. And you know what? I yes, think sir. even if Clev comes back in the next couple of days, um, which I don't know if that's going to be the timeline. He's still probably going to keep it over Nick Martinez. So it's going to be until Snell comes back, essentially. So yeah. after that, he'll probably be sent down and then probably brought back up or moved. This could just be a little showcase, and then he could be moved because they do have other pitching prospects down there. Yeah, And they'll probably get a haul from him from another team that's probably looking to make some splashes. So I don't think this is the end. But I, you know, after he goes down, I'm probably dropping him myself. I'm throwing this out there, guys. By the way, we're gonna Matt. Let's try and do this on um every guy we talk about in this waiver wire segment. He's 49% owned on Yahoo. That's the biggest fantasy baseball platform. It's the one Matt and I have used for years. So that's basically what we're gonna hit you guys with. Um, that's that's too low, guys. Go out and especially for this week, he needs to be at least 75% owned for the Cincinnati start, which is on April 20th. So come on, guys. We we, we hit you last week with a nasty Nestor. This week we're telling you Mackenzie Gore. I could see a 10 strikeout game easily from him. Um, let's transition into somebody who actually um, ripped up the um, Cincinnati Reds recently. That's um, Andrew Heaney of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, man, did he look good. Uh, in his last outing, it was six innings. He got the win, 11 Ks, didn't give up any runs. And, I mean, he looked uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, he's got this new slider that he's throwing. And that's the thing I look for with um, pitchers. If they're doing something different, if they got a new pitch, if the velocity's up. I mean, I hate to just see a guy that just nothing's changed and he had a great game. You know, that's not really standing out to me. But with Andrew Heaney specifically, he's got that new slider. The velocity's up a little bit. So, I mean, damn. Um, he uh, got 14 whiffs and 22 swings on um uh on 22 swings for that slider. So I mean, damn, it's looking pretty good so far. And that first outing looked great too. Um, against Minnesota, he pitched 4.1 innings, had five strikeouts, didn't give up a run there either. He's only 55% owned, and he gets San Diego this week. Um, on the 23rd of April. So I think that's a great start. San Diego doesn't really have a lot going for them right now without Tatis. So I mean, I think Andrew Heaney, somebody you go out there and get, and you know what, you juice the arm. If he's if he's not great, you know you drop him. But you know if he's good, you got yourself a uh, gold on him, man. He uh, been a big prospect for a while, but let's see if the Dodgers work something out with him here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would definitely ride the wave. I think he's one of those like little little sparks you're going to get in the beginning of the season that's going to get you a couple extra Ks and wins because he's on the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. But you know, don't look at him for a long term solution. But he's a right now solution. Mm -hmm. You know. Right now, especially in the beginning of the season, you want to manufacture some wins, you know, kind of lock it up. And, you know, this can help you where your whether you're playoff seeding or anything of the sort. So, you know, I would roll out, get him, get him this week, you know, flops, drop him. Like Dom said, if he, if he doesn't keep it rolling the second he does peace. Yep. Fully agree with you there, Matt. Um, I'm not holding on to him. If he got, if he throws up two bad starts in a row, I'll, I'll see you next. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Um, real quick, guys, just this, the guy got, got to do it with the Yankee cap on. Got to talk about him. A uh, nasty nester, man. Five innings, twelve Ks. Um, too bad the Yankees couldn't get him the win. You know, we got to start hitting when we pitch good. But um, damn, man, if you went out there and you picked him up like we told you to, it's paying off big time. He had a great year last year. I think he's somebody that. Not only are the Yankees 
think he's going to lean on, but your fantasy team's going to lean on. And he's a sneaky um, top five guy in your rotation going forward, man, in my opinion. I just think you, you ride the wave with him, too. Uh, man, we, we see if you got um, you know, a couple of names here early in the season, that starting pitcher, and that's a position where, um, you know, you come in the next two, three months, you're going to be looking at your waiver wire and you're like, damn, I wish I, I picked up a uh, nasty Nestor or Heaney or some of these guys that might wind up panning out for you, you know, mm-hmm. Matt, you want to do the, your, your turn on the victory lap here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, Dom didn't tell you guys exactly what he did in the last, in the last two starts. So I'm going to let everybody know. So. You know, outside of me saying I called it, I didn't think it was going to get this ridiculous. Um, you know, <laughs> what he did yesterday was absolutely mind-boggling. So, I mean, yes, it was Baltimore. So, you know, let's not, you know, overhype it. But he did get 12 Ks um, with no earned runs and a .80 whip. So, the kid is just lighting the world up on fire. And the only reason we lost is because the bullpen. So... You know, if we're going to start seeing kind of performances like this, the fact that he even has that in the arsenal, you know, that's really good upsides. This kid's going to be a long-term keeper. He's that. He's going to be that guy that is like, oh, man, he was that beginning of the season wave of wire pitcher, process, uh, pitcher pickup this year that is going to win people championships. I'm going to stand by that. And then his first start, you know, against Toronto of all teams, didn't give up a run yet, by the way, because he didn't give up one in this one. He's got five Ks and a, a 0.69 whip. Again, he didn't get the W just because it didn't have enough innings. That was in four four innings, and uh, we call it yesterday was five. So I think they're going to start ramping up and getting him a couple more innings each week, and you know, starting to get him get those quality starts in and get him rolling. He's going to be a real top dog over here in the next couple of weeks. Now, um, I think I've kind of talked about Nestor enough. Yeah, yeah. Just um, real quick, I'm mean, gonna just throw out he was he's 64 percent owned on Yahoo. Go out there and make that a hundred because I don't know why he's not owned in yeah. any leagues unless they're inactive. Matt, you could take the lead if you got somebody else that you want to rant about. Yeah, I got Mr. Jesus Sanchez. Oh, that's oh. your boy. Yes, sir. So um, just so everybody knows, he was like one of your last picks of your draft. And um, he was my 32nd overall outfielder going into the year. Um, and I, I can actually, if anybody doesn't wants to doubt me, I will send them a screenshot of my rankings. I am dead serious. I can back that Matt and pat him there. He sure I'm, did. That's his boy. I was drafting him around pick 100. That's how confident I am in this kid. And this kid double donked uh, over the weekend. And on top of that, I mean, shoot, this kid is batting for average, which I actually didn't think he was going to have this kind of average. You know, he, at all, I think he was. I thought he was more of like a 250 hitter, 260 hitter. And now that he's kind of showing, he's taking the step forward. He has a little bit more patience at the plate. You know, he, he's just killing it right now. He has six runs, two bombs, seven ribbies, and batting three nine one. Are you kidding me? You know, th- this is like some astronomical, you know, stuff. Step forward for a young player who you know had made a big splash last year, and now is building upon that. And, you know, as long as this kid stays healthy, I mean, shoot, sky's the limit. He could be one of those, you know, you know, keeper dynasty, uh, you know, whew, nice little surprises for you. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I I was Matt, – Matt was taking Jesus and Sanchez super high. I mean, it was funny. We were doing a lot of mock drafts. Together. I love Jesus Sanchez, too. I had him on uh, one of my other teams last year, you know. Um, and we were doing – Matt was taking him super high. I'm like, Matt, you can wait a little bit. He's like, nah, that's, that's my boy. He's like, I'm taking him. And, I mean, I was getting him on, like, almost every team I had besides the leagues I'm in with Matt. But, um, you know, Jesus Sanchez is just absolutely great, man. Uh, I'm going to tell you what uh, he did last year. Um, in limited uh, at-bats, he had 14 home runs. Um, and it was uh, the thing is, is that he's got so much pop in that bat that I think he's easily a 30-plus home run guy. Um, he could drive in, you know, like 90. That um, team isn't um, – great but i think with jesus the thing you'll see is is once again he's got that out of the park power and it's playing out so far like matt said he's hitting over 300 you know he's double donged um I, i'm gonna beating a dead horse here just go out and get him he's 56 percent owned you got to get that up over 80 percent owned uh he's going to be very very good for your team going forward um somebody else uh let's get into here let's get into former new york yankee who's actually been uh pretty good so far this year that's Corey kluber um, he's somebody who I actually had a li- ranked a little bit higher than the consensus. People really weren't um, talking about him at all coming in. But 
you know what? He had a good year for the Yankees last year until he got hurt. But I'm going to read you off what he's done so far this year. This year so far in um, two starts, he's got a 1.86 ERA. He's pitched 9.2 innings. He's only given up two earned runs. He's got nine strikeouts, and the whip is a 1.13. So he looks pretty good here so far, you know? And I think Tampa is going to be able to emit his innings nicely, unlike the, the Yankees last year, saying, hey, go for it. Throw the no-hitter, and then we won't see you for the rest of the year after that. You know, well, I know he pitched a few more times, but it wasn't longer after that that he went down with the arm injury. So I think that um, Tampa is going to be able to manage him a little bit better than the Yankees did. And you might see some really nice five-inning starts here from Corey Kluber. I say go out there and pick him up. Um, I'm going to give you his ownership percentage here in a second. Matt, if you want to rant about Kluber a little bit, I don't know how you feel about him. He's at 55% owned on Yahoo. I think that's got to get up, especially with the way starting pitcher is right now. Uh, I mean, he could he could definitely be a nice little fixin' for you know the holes in your lineup, or you're dealing with you know guys being hurt. I don't think he's a long term solution. Oh uh, yeah, definitely not a long term guy. You know he's gonna get hurt. You know it could be tomorrow. So I mean, you know I don't wish ill on him, but it does help that he's pitching for the Rays in that park and whatnot. But you know, and you know pick him up if you need him. He's not like my highest priority. I wouldn't wave my uh, use my first or second waiver priority, but you know I throw a bid on him. You know, even zero waiver fab, you know, and see what you can get and see how long this can last. But, you know, he's probably going to be this week and dump. Yeah, I mean, um, Matt, let's let's do a quick little name game real quick. So, so far we talked about, we talked about Andrew Heaney. We talked about Nestor Cortez. We talked about um, Merrill Kelly. We talked about Mackenzie Gore and Corey Kluber. I know it's a lot of names there at once. But um, I'll, I'll go first. I'll give you the order here that I would um, prioritize these guys in. Probably got to go Nasty Nestor, number one. He's just been absolutely great. Then I'm going to go Andrew Heaney. Then I'm going to go Gore. Then I'm going to go Kelly. Uh, and then I'm going to go um, last Corey Kluber. And uh, the only thing is, is, like Matt said, Corey Kluber, the thing is he can get hurt in a minute, but um, I think he's going to be serviceable while he's out there pitching. Uh, for the rest of those guys, kind of gave you the reasons that we do and don't like them already. But Matt, uh, throw me your list uh, real quick with those five names. So uh, it's definitely Nestor. You know, he's 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 a must-own at this point. You know, I would. Yeah, I believe that. He's definitely got a must-own. 50% fab, number one waiver priority is what I'm using on him. No question if he's actually still out there. Um, you know, then I'm going to probably, I agree with Andrew Heaney at two, just because he's on the Dodgers and what he's doing right yeah. now. And then, you know, Gore is definitely, a, I mean, if I'm going to keep her, a keeper league, he moves up to my number two. Um, if he's not, if you're not, then, you know, redraft, you know, then he's three. Uh, even Kelly, Kelly's kind of tied. I like Kelly a lot. Um, I've, I've been a big fan. Last year was not a hot year. I think he had like a five ERA, but two years ago, um, when I won the championship, he was actually one of my September uh, starts mm -hmm. that was actually coming in and getting me some extra Ks, helping my ERA out, got me a couple Ws. And, you know, I think that, you know, we're, he's, he's getting returned to that form back in 20. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited with him and, um, you know, it's between him and him and Gore. Cause at least, you know, if anything, Kelly over, cause he has more of a long-term solution because he actually has a, a rotation slot, whereas Gore is kind of slipping, uh, kind of popping in there. Um, and then, yeah, and then Kluber there at the bottom, All right, yeah. so pretty much, pretty much on par there, Matt. See, Matt and I are, are pretty good here with our starting pitchers, man. We're usually in sync with that area. You know, if you guys are listening to us, you guys are probably doing pretty well right now on the waiver wires. Um, all right, we'll keep it pushing here. Um, if you're in need of catcher help, actually, I got an interesting one for you. Um, Elias Diaz of the Colorado Rockies is somebody who's actually been playing pretty well. Rockies are six and three. They're off to a hot start. You know, they've been pretty good. CJ Cohen actually um, uh, tied for the league league in home runs right now. Chris Bryant playing great. Um, and Elias Diaz is only 26% owned on Yahoo at the travesty right now. I know some of you guys out there need a catcher. Um, he's got three runs. He's got a bomb. He's got four RBIs, but he's hitting 345. And at the catcher position, I know you could do way, way worse than that. He's hitting in Coors Field for half of his game. So, I mean, there's really it's not a lot of downside. I believe he had a decent year last year, but I'm going to fact check myself here on that because I don't know for sure. But I remember him being at least serviceable. 
Uh, yeah, he was serviceable at catcher last year in 106 games. He had 338 at bats, 52 runs, 18 bombs, 44 RBIs, and he had 246. Trust me, you could do worse at catcher than that. I know it doesn't sound great, but 18 home runs and you know, uh, 246 at catcher, you know, you could totally do worse. Matt, uh, your thoughts here on uh, Elias Diaz? I, I think that you know what. You ride it while it's hot. You ride the wave, and you you see what's going on. I mean, Juice the orange, my friend. That's what I like to say. <laughs> eh, it just doesn't feel nice. Um, you know, <laughs> that's not doing it for me. It doesn't get me all tingly inside. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I would say this. You know, guy with that kind of lineup that's finally around him with you know the the way everybody's playing. I think it's it kind of gives him a nice bump. You're, you're in a two catcher league. He's definitely somebody that I'm that I'm going to be targeting on the waivers. If I'm in a single catcher league and I ended up with who's a who's a flop so far, Dom? Uh, at catcher specifically, yeah. um, hold on, I could pull up for you. I could I could find somebody for yeah. you. Yeah, because I mean, right now, right now, you got to look at it, guys. Like, I just okay. know for a fact that you could do worse at catcher because um, it's just a tough position in general. You know, it, it yeah. just it, it really is, and a guy that's hitting in cores for most of his games. I mean, so here here's how it goes right now. So. If you drafted, if you drafted, well, who's... I'll tell you guys that are struggling. You got guys like Dalton Varsho. You got guys like Yasmani Grandal. You got guys like, I mean, you're not dropping these guys, but no. I'm saying if you got somebody on the end of your bench and you want to throw in a move at extra, extra catcher for now, you could totally do that. Yeah. Like if you're stuck um, with Garver right now, who's not really playing all yeah. that hot, you know, I'd Travis Star and him in. Yeah. yeah, there's a few. If you if you picked Adley Rutschman and you know you kind of been holding there, I think you could cut Adley Rutschman right now because I don't think he's coming straight to the big leagues anyway when he's healthy. I think he's going to go down to the minors for a month or two. You know, make sure that these things are looking right. Then they'll call him up. Or yep. if you if you went out on a limb and you took a guy like Alejandro Kirk who's hitting 192 with one RBI, you know, you go What's after the, or even a Mike Zanino who's one for 18, you know, hitting 056, no bombs yet. I'll go get Elias Diaz. Uh, I, I just think uh, catcher's a tough position, and, and he's going to be a guy who's going to who's going to help more times than not. Yep. Um, Matt, I actually got one of your boys, and I'll let you take the lead. Uh, how about Nicky Lopez here? Nicky ah. Lopez off to a hot start right now. I think he's somebody you need to go out there and get. What do you think? So I mean, you know, just just so everybody knows, I am a Yankee fan, but apparently, I really do like the Royals this year. It's actually <laughs> really funny. So. Nicky Lopez is somebody that has a lot of upside on the steals category. I think that, you know what, he, he's one of those guys you could probably, you know, count him in for 20 to 30 steals. Uh, he's definitely getting the playing time. He has a second base eligibility and shortstop, which is actually really, really, um, you know, valuable, especially, you know, God forbid a second baseman goes down, knock on wood, or you missed out on a, on somebody um, on one during the draft. You just happen to let that one slide. And he didn't pick up Galvin Lux. He's a nice guy to go in and slide him in at two because, I mean, right now he hasn't stolen Very any Javier bases. Very Javier Baez replacement. Exactly. And, you know, it's not like he's stolen any bases yet, which is – which is bananas. I'm actually very surprised, but he See, you, 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 you took my little argument yeah. there, man. I was about to say yeah. the thing is he hasn't even stolen a base yet. So when you're picking him up, all those steals are still on the table. It's not like you're picking him up with five steals already gone, you right. know, he, cause he's going to get you like 30 steals, but all 30 is still on the table right now. You pick him up next week. You know, if you're lacking in steals next week or this week upcoming, you could have yourself a little two, three steal week. Yeah. Guy like Nicky Lopez. And he's batting 348. So, I mean, you know, yes, it, sir. usually you're worried about when you pick up somebody off the waiver wires that they're going to hurt your batting average. He's 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 good. He's known for a good batting average. He's very patient at the plate. And the fact he's batting 348 right now, I mean, that's not lasting, but he's probably going to be like a 290 hitter. So, uh, yeah, I was going to say, he can still hit 300. He's only 17% owned on right. Yahoo right now. So it's, Come it's on, to guys. Go scoop him up. Go out there, scoop him up. He's going to get you your steals. Don't worry about it. And I think I think it's awesome that he hasn't still on a base yet because I know those are coming for me. It's it's, uh, it's found, found steals there with that one. Absolutely. But, yeah, uh, we'll keep it pushing here because we still got more names for you, believe it or not. Um, this is another guy who's uh, a sneaky guy. I had him at the bottom of my rankings. Um, Nate Lowe, is at, or Nathaniel Lowe, actually, I believe he's going by now, is actually off to a pretty hot start um, right now. I'm going to pull up his stats here. I thought I had them, but here we go. Uh, he's only 42% owned on Yahoo. Um, he's 13 for 35 so far, hitting 371. He's got six RBIs and three runs. And that Texas 
this team hasn't even really taken off yet. Uh, Marcus Simeon's not hitting great yet. Um, I mean, Corey Seager's been pretty good so far, but I think that team is only going to get better during the season. And I think if he's hitting, uh, you know, in the middle of that lineup, I'll tell you exactly where he's been hitting. So far, he's been hitting fourth and fifth. So like I said, right in the middle of that lineup, um, hitting 371. I think he's going to drive in a lot of runs with Seager and Simeon in front of him. I think if you need a first baseman, you go out there and you give him a shot. See, the thing is, he's still fairly young, so he might be a long-term solution. This could be the year that um, he really shows uh, he was a decent end prospect. So I think, you know, um, he's actually uh, 26. So, you know, he could be that prime year where he finally shows us uh, the reason why a lot of people liked him. Yeah, I'm, I, I can see where you, where you might think that, but I think, you know, you're right at all taught. Let's see what happens. You know, it hasn't, hasn't been any big injuries yet, but I know that, you know, sometimes you don't always get the um, utility bats that you want. So, you know, he's going to, he could definitely fill in on go- days like that or possibly, you know, be an everyday starter for you at UT at least and or a corner infield in those deeper leagues or a 15-man, you know, rotisserie mm-hmm. league, you know, he. You know, with accounting stats really matter. So he's really doing it, doing you, doing you justice. And once that team wakes up, it's going to be, a, they're going to be a problem, it seems. So I think we got what one more guy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, real quick though, I will, I will, I do want to say one last thing about Nate Lowe. I will, I'll read you off what he did last year as a 25 year old with uh, on a Texas team that wasn't as nearly as um, stacked um, as they are right now. Last year he played 157 games. He had 557 at bats, 75 runs, 18 bombs, 72 ribbies, eight steals. So that's 18. Uh, bombs eight steals which is pretty serviceable and he had 264 so i think if he improves off that this year i think you could you could see something that uh you might like next year might be talking about him uh you know top 150 player possibly my mm-hmm. opinion i think i think um i think he has something to prove oh yeah so i mean th- this is our last guy here and it's uh jeremy pena I, we talked about him last year but i feel like he's a little bit more um relevant this week being at the fact that um Baez went down, so he'd be actually a really nice replacement. He's on that Houston Astros team, mm-hmm. and he's right now, as of today, he's batting 345. So, you know what? I'm going to take that kind of production. You know, if you remember what we were talking about yesterday, he's actually batting second. I don't know if he did it all week last week, but he's definitely getting his shot to be moved around in that lineup. So, I'm pretty impressed, and, uh, you know, let's see what happens. I think he could be a very nice replacement for Baez. Yeah, I, I love Jeremy Pena. If you guys were listening last week, he was somebody I was ranting about. So hopefully he went out there and got him. Uh, he's up to 44% owned. I think that still does need to go up. Um, it looks like he's been fluctuating in, in the lineup a little bit. It looks like he's been hitting seventh and eighth recently. Um, so, I mean, that's still good. Uh, you know, Houston's a great team. And I, I think uh, if he's learning from guys like Altuve and Bregman that are great um, batting average hitters, I think, you know, um, as long as they're not banging on trash cans over there, uh, he's learning something positive, hopefully. But, you know, I mean, like Matt said, the 345 um, batting average is impressive. And he's, you know, uh, had some good numbers in the minors as well. So I think, yeah, you go out there and you get yourself a Jeremy Pena. You know, um, like Matt said, a great Javier Baez replacement right now. Guys, this is, that's our little wave of wire segment. You know, it, it's been helping so far. You know, you come out here, you listen to the MDs, and we really got um got a lot of great names for you here. Uh, Matt, is there anything else that you really wanted to touch on? We got a couple more minutes here. Uh, you know what, guys? I would just say this. You know, this is that time of the year where, you know, you start low-balling players that aren't performing hot, performing well, and you, you try and make something happen. You know, package a guy two-for-one for, like, someone like Brandon Woodruff or, you know, Somebody like uh, Peralta, who people are apparently trying to drop, um, and you, you try and scoop them up on the cheap, and then you know you're ready to rock once they bounce back. Or other guys like Freddie, F- um, sorry, uh, Jack Flaherty, um, yeah. you know somebody that's looking like they're they're starting to make the way back. So these are people you want to keep an eye on and try and try and make a move to get. And it doesn't hurt, you know. You got to shoot your shot, and even if they turn it down, you know at least you're starting a conversation. You can shoot them somewhat of a good deal and. And you can kind of get to where you want to be anyway, and negotiate and kind of try and sell them. So, yeah, guys, like Matt said, this is the time of year that you go out there and you buy low on guys that aren't underperforming. You know, somebody I can think of off the top of my head, Anthony Rendon is somebody I like who hasn't been doing very well, but he's actually stolen two bases. So it shows me he's, he's he, you know, he's going to turn around at some point. Baseball is a game of highs and lows. Um, like we always like to say in this podcast, if you hit 300, if, like, three out of 10 is you're one of the best hitters in the 
big leagues. So you're going to see a lot of ebbs and flows. Um, but with guys that you know are good, you usually see that return to the norm um, where like, um, I think even Kyle Tucker has been a slow down a little bit recently after that two home run game, but that's somebody I love. The kid's going to be absolutely great. He showed you why last year, he showed you why in the minors. So people with a track record like that, I'm going, I'm going out right now. I'm making, I'm making five offers on, you know, Kyle Tucker. I'm calling the owner up, you know, and bothering him at work. Hey, you know, uh, what can we do for Kyle Tucker here? You know, but here's the thing though. And when we're going to talk about trading, you know, we'll talk about that for a second. You actually do want to try and help the other team you don't want to go out there and throw out a shit offer in the sense of like you know i mean like because if it's if it's a smart owner if it's a smart owner if it's a savvy owner in your league you know and you're trying to make a trade for a specific player right you want to go out there and you want to convince him that this trade actually might wind up helping his team in the long run that's the way i like to make trades i'll give you um for instance last year in the league i traded um aaron nola for or, or i traded um Jose Abreu for Aaron Nola, right? And now that's a trade that's going to help both teams because, you know, that one team's getting a great bat, one team's getting a great arm. You want to try and make trades like that because, you know, it builds um, in your league, it builds the sense of, hey, this guy's actually, you know, like a good trader. He's not out there robbing people, you know? I mean, hey, if you can rob people, go ahead, be my guest, but it might not leave you the best reputation in your league and it may it'll make you look bad later on, may <laughs> make people not want to trade with you and stuff like that. But I say, hey, right now you go out there and you try and find a way to make these trades look good and you know that's what i'm saying go out there and get you a brandon woodruff or julio urias guys that are underperforming you know that's a i think a key thing right now besides you know listening to the mds and our waiver wire segment go out there and make a couple trades right now you know yeah i mean you know i'm more of that guy that likes to start off low balling <laughs> and then uh you know start working your way up you know you gotta get the conversation started that's you true. don't you don't want to show your best hand either because then there's also those guys that love to be difficult cough cough jp and uh, <laughs> need to win the trade every time so you gotta yeah. walk them you gotta you gotta walk it walk your way up there and gently get to there and you know get get you know feel it out and then sometimes too if you you got to try and outright rob everybody at the same time listen this is a game of of rings and championships and being malicious and vicious and you know that's the way the game is meant to be played so you know it's one of those things where you know what let's just destroy everybody and win some championships and that's the way you do it so you know what i think uh i think i've been too many but too much of too many war movies but uh you know <laughs> let's get her done and uh um, yeah. i think we can call it down you know, yes, yes, sir. That's enough for uh, this one, guys. Thank you so much, as always, as we say every week. You know, uh, if there, any questions, anything you want, email us, the fantasymds at gmail.com. We appreciate, you know, you listening. We appreciate all likes, follows, subscribes, and everything. And, hey, we'll be back with you uh, on a new one Thursday. See you. Peace.